Welcome to another edition of the Tourpreneur Podcast. And in this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with John Canister of Battlefield Tours of Virginia. Now, John has created some interesting ideas and interesting experiences. He has created it in a way that it's made it bingeable, where it has people coming back time and time again to watch the next part of the episode or take out the next experience. It almost leaves every experience in a cliffhanger, wanting people to come back for more. Learn more about this and what John has developed, as well as how he set up his business and why he loves his passion of battlefield tours within the United States, specifically Virginia. So welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast and welcome John Canister. So welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast, John. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself and know a little bit more about the passion that you have for, for the American Civil War and what was it you, you, that made you fall in love with that period of history and, and how that's sort of progressed into, you, into your business? Well, thank you, Chris. It's really nice to be here and uh, share my story with Battlefield Tours of Virginia and uh, I guess going with the uh, the the deep dive, um, I got hit by or bit by the history bug when I was about six years old, and my family took a vacation from uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, to Williamsburg, Virginia, with Washington D.C. in the middle. It's kind of the fertile crescent of American history. Uh, presidential homes and founding fathers, and learning about our American Revolution. And of course, the Civil War was rolled up in that. And it made a, a profound impact on my life. Uh, and it's something that I always read and studied and wanted to learn more about. Um, it set me on the course of becoming a historian. I studied uh, history um, and I started giving um, historical tours Um from the age of 16 in uh, museums and uh, historical sites, uh, volunteered and paid. And um, I uh, actually worked for a military museum as a uh, education and events director, and I developed interpretive programs. Uh, but in the end, um, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, and uh, I ended up with a career with the government but uh, I found a niche where I had extra time and flexibility to pursue my passion, which is really history and sharing that with others. Um, and so um, today I live in historic Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is about an hour south of Washington, D.C. And I've uh, continued to uh, be involved in the historical community. Uh, with our uh, battlefields here. I actually live on the Fredericksburg battlefield. That's where my house is. Wow. And in the process of helping out the local battlefield, um, sort of showing people around and volunteering and producing a, um, a museum exhibit for the National Park Service, uh, I started to see that there was a need to get people mobile on these Civil War battlefields. And here in Fredericksburg, we have a very unique situation where we have four major Civil War battlefields within 20 square miles, which is one of the highest concentrations anywhere in the U.S. So there's a lot of them here. And um, a lot of people I found would start looking at these Civil War battlefields at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's kind of our, uh, our best known battlefield. And they've developed that battlefield into almost a Walt Disney World experience with every kind of tour imaginable for this one battlefield. You can take a private tour, a bus tour, a horseback riding tour, a Segway tour, a ghost tour. It's all there. And so... After people start their battlefield journey, they come to Virginia, where we have the most battlefields anywhere in the U.S., here in Virginia. And they are shocked and astounded that we 
don't have any of those tour offerings, really. It's very difficult to find them. If you're lucky, you could find an old retired gentleman to meet you somewhere and hand him some cash and have him show you around. And so that's when I saw there's a real need for this um, to get people mobile around a battlefield with a guide. And so that's where everything got started. Um, well, I'll get it. Just, I just got to go back slightly. It's just the fact that you said that you started to do tours in a museum at 16 years old. You no, know, I remember being back when I was 16 and I was probably trying to chase too many girls and drinking alcohol and everything else I should have been doing at 16. Absolutely. It's, a, it's having that mentality of actually doing that in a museum and doing tours. I just find that fascinating that you had that mindset back at a, an early age. So, Yes. Well, you know, our, our history, and it, it doesn't matter where, where you are or what country you're in, you have different defining moments in, in your nation's history. And a lot of these defining moments are epic mm -hmm. stories with real people that did incredible things. And I find that utterly fascinating. And, and um, you know, it's something I've, I've shared and, or looked into, and I, and I would like to share that with others mm -hmm. so they can discover wow. that for themselves. Yeah, so it, what was the period? How long were you a, a veteran for between that and, and then starting, starting the business? So was it, was it a recent thing, a recent change that you had? Uh, no, I was a, I was a veteran for about uh, four or five years, really. Um, and then I continued basically doing something similar, uh, for the government. Um, and, uh, matter of fact, I'm still employed by the U S government in the Washington DC area. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm a tourpreneur that still hasn't quit my day job. <laughs> um, and be just because I'm so passionate about this. Um, and, um, uh, you know, on that note, when you don't quit your day job, uh, the process of being a tourpreneur is so much slower. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you have to wear many hats and, you know, if you've got the day job as well as trying to run a business so that yeah, I can imagine it's, well, I know for a, for a fact, it's very challenging. I did it myself when I started out in business, so it's, it's very challenging, but it's one that will hopefully, no, in time you will find rewarding that you'll be able to make that switch that you might not need that job anymore and you can rely on your own your own tour business. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So you used, to, you used to run a different type of experience when you first started out. Do you want to you know, talk a little bit about that you know, and, and why you changed and why you, I hate to use that word pivot because it seems to be something that's overused since the pandemic, but what made you change from uh, your initial sort of way you set up experiences to what you've got now? And if you want to explain what that was as well. That's right, Chris. So what I'm doing now looks a little bit different from what I started. And that was based on sort of the trends and, and demand and um, sort of maturing as a tourpreneur. You know, we don't have all the answers on day one. You know, that's mm -hmm. part of the tourpreneur journey uh, that I'm sharing. So um, I wanted to get people mobile around our battlefield in a massive way on a shuttle bus. Um and uh, partnering with our local downtown visitor center, which a lot of cities have these visitor centers where um, all of the tours um, meet up there. Um, our city had um, basically a, a staff that would sell our tickets from the visitor center. So it was very attractive to have our own, you know, unpaid staff the day of selling our tour tickets. And so I wanted to build up to this shuttle bus and sort of test the business model. And so I first started as a, um, as a walking tour, um, a downtown Fredericksburg Civil War walking tour. Um, and um, I also did something else to sort of try to generate revenue, which is a private battlefield tour service and that these people that would get this walking tour if they would want to see more of the battlefield or our other battlefields in the area um, i offered a private battlefield tour 
which is basically hiring the guide by the hour and the guide joins your vehicle. We don't provide a vehicle, which is a business model started from um, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, um, which is really, uh, they've been doing this since the First World War. And, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, one of the oldest tours, um, you know, basically in the world, it's it's the Gettysburg uh, Private Guides that started around 1916, um, where the guy joins your vehicle, which is, uh, which is a very economical way for anybody to get a tour, uh, which is something that we want to do. We want to get people around these battlefields, no matter what economic level you're at. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was offering, um, the walking tour, uh, from the visitor center. Um, and you, you know, we had our website where you could also buy tickets online. Uh, I found out real quick that, a lot of the people that want to see Civil War battlefields are older people, you know, 40 and up, and they don't want to do as much walking, you know. Mm. So um, uh, so I raised enough funds for my walking tour and my um, private tours uh, to go ahead and get that shuttle bus. And um, so I started to offer shuttle bus tours now from the – uh, downtown visitor center. Well, so it, having that shuttle bus, I imagine that's allowed you to provide those experiences to a larger demographic, and like you just say, get more of those sort of people who maybe don't like to walk as much or to walk as far. That's right. Um, it was basically to get people on the shuttle bus, and we had uh, six different stops where we could stop, get out. Uh, see an area, get your great pictures, get a closer look, get back on the shuttle bus. Um, but I had um, uh, I had a problem with that as far as um, I wasn't really getting the ticket sales from um, the downtown visitor center like I really hoped. And as a new new tourpreneur, I really didn't know too much about SEO. Um, I didn't have the funds for it necessarily. So I was hoping that the visitor center would provide enough ticket sales to supplement my online bookings. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't happening because the, uh, the counter staff at the visitor center uh, who were, you know, retired older ladies, you know, um, they had no personal interest in, the American civil war. And they, even though they, they like me personally, uh, they were all of the tours that they were suggesting were for our downtown trolley bus tour. So we got very little ticket sales mm -hmm. from our visitor center and the management there wouldn't really do much about it. Uh, the management gave us a very poor location for our shuttle bus um, which was kind of across the street from all the other tours. Our shuttle bus was pointed downhill. All you could see was the, the back of it. And really the, uh, the long story short was I didn't have the support of the visitor center as far as for ticket sales. I try to do different types of things uh, to, to get more suggestions. And um, at the end of the day, um, our, our downtown bus tour was, was a monopoly. Um, I didn't have the SEO to really get the um, the ticket sales. Um, I decided on my own early on, I did not want to go with an OTA uh, mm -hmm. to get those extra tickets. And um, so uh, during this time that I was trying to get the shuttle bus kind of up and going, uh, my private tours were the ones that were really selling. And it was my private tours that were really keeping my shuttle bus tour afloat, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, when people would go to my website, they were wanting to book a private tour uh, with me to show them around these battlefields, just like they do at Gettysburg, which is really the gold standard to have something very knowledgeable, show you a Civil War battlefield. And... Um, so it was really after my first year of running the shuttle bus and seeing that this is really um, a heavy burden 
um, that I did not have the support from my downtown visitor center um, and other things. And the fact that my private tour was um, taking off really and um, the, the different battlefield historians who are short staffed and are really nailed down at the visitor centers were actually sending people my way. They were the ones getting the phone calls for a, uh, for a tour around these battlefields and the, the historians at these battlefields just cannot get people mobile around these battlefields. So it was at the end of my first year of running this shuttle bus and I saw the writing on the wall and the expense, you know, mm-hmm. of running a shuttle bus with the maintenance, the insurance and all of that. I decided at the end of the season to put the shuttle bus up for sale, which it sold within four days. I was, you know, really <laughs> thankful and really go into uh, private battlefield tours, you know, full time, which was great because I had very little overhead mm-hmm. with that. Um and it was really uh, a blessing in disguise, Chris, because mm-hmm. when I show, sold that shuttle bus um, in November, um, the very next spring was COVID and I didn't have that shuttle bus. And I was... Uh, so you had no outgoings with that then, basically, which was good. So Yeah. So all of our mm-hmm. other um, tours that operated from the visitor center especially the Monopoly tour, they were all stuck in the mud. And I was able to run my um, private battlefield tours during COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, As a matter of fact, um, kind of backing up a little bit, um, before COVID hit, I had a happy problem. And my happy problem was I had satisfied tour clients that had toured all four area battlefields in the Fredericksburg area which takes a couple of days to do that. And because they couldn't find any other battlefield tour in Virginia, and there's dozens of, there's dozens of battlefields, they were coming back to me and they were begging me to show them more battlefields in the state of Virginia. And they really didn't care which battlefield it was. Just please show me another battlefield. I really enjoyed your service. Um, You know, we offer comprehensive, uh, tours, uh, you know, uh, very, very professional. And um, so before COVID hit, really, we were already developing more battlefield tours within an hour of Fredericksburg. And, mm-hmm. um, and we were getting repeat clients um, back to see more and more battlefields with us. So mm-hmm. it turned out to be a blessing in disguise as, you know, to use that word pivot from, you know, a walking tour, shuttle bus tour to just really developing private battlefield tours. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we'll actually come on to that in a second with what you've done with the the multiple battle battlefields because uh, I found that fascinating and I think a lot of the listeners will as well. Um, but I just find it really interesting that the fact that, well, uh, <laughs> I was going to say a typical operator. There is no such thing as a typical operator, but an operator who has a, a, a shuttle bus or a bus, you would think, okay, we could fill that up. We can take people around on tour and everything else. But the fact that you've went purely now into the private sort of tour aspect and got rid of your bus is actually showing a lot of the data that we are seeing as more and more people are wanting more private tours. They'll happily pay that little that premium for the private tour rather than being stuck in a bus with lots of people they don't know or in a group with lots of people they don't know, there's still a time and place for that type of experience. But it's one of the things that we always say to, or I speak to a lot of operators you know, through my through my agency and just day to day is just, if you don't offer a private experience, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot because it opens up so many new markets because there is a, such a huge market out there for people just wanting that private experience with a tour guide, with with our family or with our friends and just them and no one else. And even, I don't know if you've seen it in your, in your tours, but even the sort of multi-generational uh, groups yes. as well, where you've got kids and grandparents and you know, mother and father there, et cetera, et cetera. We find that that's actually a, a, such a growing market as well. Absolutely. We do see that multi-generational where you have a father that discovered this and he wants to show his son or, you know, you have the grandfather, father and grandchild on this tour and, you know, speaking of generations and other 
uh, service that we offer our um, ancestor tours. Um, as far as you have, you know, the American Civil War, you had, you know, hundreds of thousands of troops that fought on these battlefields and people are delving into their ancestry, which was also a popular activity during COVID, you know, mm -hmm. working on your family tree. So a lot of people, a lot of descendants want to go to these locations where their ancestors regiment fought on these civil war battlefields. And if, if they can provide us the ancestors regiment, like the 10th New York regiment, in a matter of minutes, we can locate that regiment on our battlefield map and we can incorporate that into a tour for wow. them to tell them, you know, to show them to make that connection on the battlefield, to, t to talk about what action was swirling around their ancestors regiment and what was the big story. So we get, um, you know, quite a few ancestor tour requests to make that connection and of course if their ancestor was on more than one was involved in one or more battle they want to see all of the other mm -hmm. battlefields and so that's turned into a multi-tour opportunity as well uh, i can imagine that's such a powerful experience for someone who's you no know, i don't know what it would be if it'd be great 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 grandparents or whatever it would be or, or that type of thing but someone in their family in the past that you can stand there and t tell them the story of your family member was here in this battle at this moment in time right in the middle of this where you're standing just now that that that, that connection for 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 the the, the consumer or the, the the person you're taking the tour out on would be huge and i imagine that it can get quite emotional for them as well at times so Yes, it's it's a it's it's an incredible experience. It's an honor to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a whole gamut of emotions from excitement. Some, you know, they they break down and cry. You know, I'm kind of getting a little emotional thinking about it because you know they've they've heard about this their entire life, mm -hmm. and they finally get to that spot. They they see it for their eyes, and it's it's a it's a very moving experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, 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 think, I would find that fascinating and you know that, that's the sort of stuff I, I like to see when people are, are, are generating tours and stuff like that. Anyway, you can have an emotional connection with your audience and that just sounds a prime example of how it can be done. If you can have that emotional connection, then you know, they're going to come back time and time again. You're going, to go, you're going to get those great reviews and everything else from that because that is something that you really can't buy on bus tour or 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 a, or a typical tour and i say again i use that word typical loosely and what you would normally get in an experience like that if you can have something that's more personal and that, that sort of generational thing and, and ancestry so i just i love that type of experience and anyone anyone listening who are able to be in a position in their destination to offer something like that i think would be uh, you would you would you would do very very well in my opinion so absolutely yeah, yeah. well before we, we we talk a little bit more about experiences etc you know what one of the things or if anyone who knows me personally or or, uh, or read, read my book or anything like that will know that i'm a huge advocate of a strong brand and a clear brand something that really highlights what it is that your business does just by looking at the logo or the the, the market materials around it or, or how that's presented to to the consumer uh, and that's that was a position you were in you decided to sort of rebrand you know how has that rebrand do you want to so I'll let people know what that rebrand was and how that has affected your business now going forward. Right, Chris. So that's a great question. Um, coming out of COVID, I decided to rebrand our tour company just to better reflect what we do and to kind of get everything kind of straightened out from when I first got started, which when I first got started, like a lot of tourpreneurs, didn't know... Um, a much ab about this. You know, I, I tell tourpreneurs, you know, I'm, I'm a historian first, a businessman second, and a tech guy dead last, you know. <laughs> um, so when I first got started as a tourpreneur, I try to think of a, of a simple name uh, when people did Google searches, you know, because I knew I would have really not a whole lot of SEO budget. And I wanted to do other tours besides Civil War tours. You know, I wanted to do architectural tours and American Revolution colonial tours and maybe African-American tours. So I came up with a simple name, which was Fredericksburg 
Tours, thinking people would do a Google search for Fredericksburg Tours. And we're headquartered in, in beautiful mm -hmm. uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is just a real charming uh, town on the river. Um, and um, I found out that that name was very confusing uh, because it was just, it was too generic. And people got us confused with, you know, our trolley tour or the visitor center. There was a Fredericksburg, Texas, which I knew about, and they offered tours. So every once in a while, I'd get people wanting Fredericksburg, Texas. I, I even got a, um, uh, a, um, a review for, for a Fredericksburg, Texas tour, um, you know, on, on one of my listings, which was kind of funny. Um, so... <laughs> Um, like a lot of tourpreneurs, I didn't know if we would survive COVID or not, which we did. And so we actually kind of, you know, had a, you know, got stronger during COVID. And so as we emerged out of COVID, um, I felt like that was the opportunity to really rebrand, change our name to better reflect what we do, you know, which we don't do the walking or the shuttle bus tour, you know, we're, our niche really is just private Civil War battlefield tours, and our, our name needed to reflect that. Um, and I figured since we're changing our name to really overhaul our website, which, you know, my website was uh, a Weebly template. I could only get so much out of it, out of it, what I wanted to do. I couldn't really do what I wanted to make it do. I, I basically growing out of the state of Virginia, I've divided the state of Virginia into um, areas like you would in a, in a country. Um, and I, and offer different battlefields in those areas. And I really couldn't get that out of my mm -hmm. website, my Weebly template. And so um, I decided to pull all of this stuff together and coming out of COVID January is really when I, discovered to a preneur, you know, Shane, uh, Whaley and, you know, uh, and that's really when I figured out a lot of things I had no idea about being a tour operator, you know, we're, you know, being isolated and not really knowing a lot about this, you know, um, you know, I read a very inspirational book, how to turn your online lookers into bookers. You know, which was a great. I did. I did pay you for that plug. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and there was you know uh, a, a marketing company behind that, and so I figured, well, I already wanted to um, rebrand uh, when I discovered Tourpreneur and Shane Whaley, mm -hmm. and I found a great you know kind of guide through that, and um, so that's when I changed the name into. Um, Battlefield Tours of Virginia, and with that, took the moment to link with a marketing company. Um, a, a big decision with that, as I shared, I haven't quit my day job, so I don't quite have the time. And you know, time is money. So, mm -hmm. going with a marketing company that could straighten out everything as I rebrand uh, with a bigger and better website and apply a lot of these things that I've learned through tourpreneur. Um, it was actually just launched. My new brand was launched um, last September. So it's, it's been less than 90 days, but I've had a great, uh, you know, uh, reception from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people can understand it a lot better. That, that was another you know, problem I had was people understanding these private tours because it's a different concept. Half of my clients get it because they've done this or they're aware of it from Gettysburg where you hire the guide by the hour to join your mm -hmm. vehicle. But half of my clients don't get it. They expect us to provide a vehicle which would cost significantly more and when I tell people the price point for that, then they then they're sold for the guy joining their vehicle, <laughs> um, so they can see more battlefields. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah no, on on the brands, no, um, I remember when we spoke about it initially. No, I th yeah, part of it was to just make it s so much easier 
for the consumer to know exactly what it is that you do. So you know, Battlefield Tours of Virginia basically tells people what it is that you do. So you offer tours around that side, side of things. But also allows, not not just for them, but for allows you to focus on that that for your marketing as well and your messaging and everything else, knowing that that's the, the one niche that you're going down. So you know that everything has to be focused to that. And it just sets your mind to be more like that as well. And even the, the, the previous name, um, especially for some, for some foreigners, just spelling that, you know, Fre uh, Fredericksburg would be quite hard for some foreigners as well. So something that's what a lot of people and a lot of operators need to realise. No, don't just don't just think about your own in local area or the American market or whatever. If you're getting visitors from from different countries, think about how they're going to be able to spell some of these words or anything like that as well, and just try to make it really really simple for them. So, um, and that, yeah, again, that was that was one of the other reasons why we suggested the change as well. So. Um, but, um, but but to go, to go back to your experiences, um, the fact that you've now got these sort of multiple uh, sort of battlefield tours, um, it was one of the things that you mentioned when we, uh, before you came on in the, uh, in the email to me that, that I found really interesting and it sort of made me think was you've now looked at your experiences almost like how Netflix looks at you know, when, they, when they release a new show uh, and they tend to for the most part tend to release them all in bulk so people can binge watch those sort of uh, episodes and, and things up like from their favorite shows and you've sort of done that with your experiences that um, and it's, it's allowed you to have that repeat business that you can go to battlefield day you can get some good history and knowledge and uh, a great time and that experience but then if you want to find out more about the journey for, uh, further from that in the next period of that history then you can come on to the, the tour for Battlefield B, et cetera, et cetera, and go on from there. So you've, you've sort of created a sort of almost like an episodic way of delivering the experiences and tours. Do you want to just explain a little bit more about that? Because I find that fascinating. Yeah, so I've created what I call a binge-watching tour experience, Chris, which might sound kind of funny. And um, it started because a lot of my clients were very – confused about what battlefield they should see and they're they're really overwhelmed uh there's all of these different names gettysburg antita manassas and uh so they're trying to figure out you know where where do i start where do i begin and so uh what i've done is i've tried to share how these battlefields are almost like uh episodes and uh you know, series really, or seasons and episodes like you would with the TV series. Yeah. So the American Civil War, you could look at it as far as it's, you know, four years. You look at that as four seasons. And within every year, you have battles, which are like episodes. And all of these battles, they're related to one another. Um, they're not isolated events. Uh, there's other things that happen as far as politics and uh you know things that happen and so um what i've done is i've when i get that phone call or email i find out well have you been to a battlefield before and half of my clients they've already been to gettysburg which we've established as like the walt disney world of mm -hmm. battlefields so what i what i try to do is i try to link other battlefields related to Gettysburg as in seasons and episodes. So if Gettysburg is season three, episode three, I try to get them to season three, episode maybe two or episode one, which we have that here in Fredericksburg. We have the two battles that led up to Gettysburg and the two battles that came after Gettysburg. So we can link those battlefields like episodes mm -hmm. so they all relate to one another which really creates a more comprehensive enriching experience mm -hmm. and they kind of get it um the civil war kind of as a sidetrack here in the u.s was the um biggest or most popular record-breaking documentary here in the u.s was the ken burns Civil War series, which was done in sort of uh, an episodic um, sequence. And so um, it's, it's a much more enjoyable experience knowing that these battles are all related. So mm -hmm. I might get a phone call just to tour one battlefield. And when I can show them how these battles are linked, 
um, it's turned it into a multi battlefield tour experience, or instead of spending one day looking at a, some battlefields, now they want to spend two days with me, you know, touring all the battles that led up to Gettysburg. And like any um, episode uh, on TV or whatnot, you know, usually it ends on a cliffhanger so that you'll tune in to see the next episode. So all of my guides, you know, they're, I, I have multiple guides that give these tours. It's not just me. Most of the time we'll end a battlefield uh, tour on a cliffhanger because guess what? You know, there's another one that's going to come after this one. Mm -hmm. So after uh, our clients get a, a really high quality experience with us uh, and they get really excited and their tour ends on a cliffhanger, um, they'll, they will come back. I have a, a very good success rate of return clients that want to pick up where they left off and continue with this kind of binge watching tour mm -hmm. um, experience. Yes. And yeah. I, I just see that's opened up so many doors. And again, for anyone listening and watching, it's just, so basically what you've done is you've created separate tour experiences that all link together. So I've yes. taken that episodic sort of a tour or experience, as you said, each one ends in a cliffhanger, wanting them, leaving them to want more. So they hopefully come back. And from what you're saying is they do come back. So you're getting that repeat business, um, which a lot of operators listening will are scratching their head on how they can create re uh, repeat business. Because for a lot of operators, especially day tours, is they'll come do it once and then maybe never ever do it again. So that's, right. that's what tends to happen. But not only that, then you've also op opened the fact that you can now pivot from just offering day tours to multi-day tours, which yeah. in the way that you've done it is such a fantastic way of making that more of a natural progression rather than trying to think, okay, what can I do as a multi-day tour that can last two or three days? You can do that now because of your situation and creating that sort of episodic day-by-day -day experience. And, and, and for anyone listening, though, this is a prime example of how this can be done successfully. And I, I have to commend you on that. So. Yes, um, it is. It can be done. Um, you know, it, it could be done, especially with history and culture tours, may, maybe others. You know, one example is, you know, Americans are obsessed with, you know, the British royal family. But it's so confusing, you know, going over hundreds of years, you know, the, in the Elizabethan period or the Tudors. But if, if, if you could make that into a chronological experience and, and link them, you know, you'll you'll bring them back because they'll want to mm -hmm. pick up with that you know drama and epic series you know H hence the crown is so popular so yes absolutely so, there you go so, so there you go so no i, I find that find that absolutely fascinating for that so again anyone listening to that will take note no you can create multi-day tour experiences or looking at what's in your area what's in your destination what can you do that you can make it episodic and make people want to binge watch and come time and time again and do that so i think you know if anything you've taken from this this podcast and this 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 video, that's the main one for me because that can open up so many revenue streams for a lot of operators out there that are that are looking for ways to generate that extra cash. So, um, so I think it's brilliant to be honest, really really good. Um, so what's so what's next for Battlefield Stores? Now you've got all this. No, which which your sort of next steps? Where are you hoping to take it? That's a great question, Chris. Well, um, I actually um, got that sort of developed at our last uh tourpreneur shindig uh in dc with uh uh pete mitch and uh, mitch and they yeah. they really helped to kind of formulate some of my thoughts and really where i need to go uh up until this point uh my tour business has really been sort of inbound getting the bookings coming to me uh which has been really nice but really my focus going forward really needs to turn to more outbound um, and uh, going after really, uh, you know, student bus tours in the Washington, D.C. area, which is something I really want to do is to go after a younger audience. You know, most mm -hmm. of my tours are an older audience, 40 and up. You know, they've studied this their entire life. Now they have the time and money. Uh, but getting, you know, students from across the U.S. or from different countries visiting Washington, D.C., it's an easy uh, one hour down to 
Fredericks the Fredericksburg area battlefields, which is you know much closer than Gettysburg where they're going to. So, uh, so getting these larger tours, um, also really going you know outbound after uh, businesses, corporations, government to offer uh, training sessions with them. Training meaning uh, going over things, um, using the battlefield as a classroom, study a battlefield and learn things like um, leadership, communication, you know, what you do when things go wrong, thinking Mm -hmm. outside of the box, things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. Another training session would be diversity, which is a big hot topic for businesses or corporations. You know, we have a big um, lesson in diversity here on our battlefields, learning about the enslaved people, learning about the emancipation proclamation of freeing the enslaved people, and then uh, putting African Americans in in uniforms and mm-hmm. learning about those soldiers that helped to turn the tide in the American Civil War. Um, so really, that's where I'm going is you know uh, becoming more of an outbound tour operator. You know, with my with my inbound sales, that's that's an X price point. But for outbound, going after Mm -hmm. larger tours, I can make substantially more, which I would call Y. Um, And so my I I learned from uh, Pete and Mitch, you know, that my excellent new website is like my storefront Mm -hmm. and my private tours, you know, look really good to, you know, my larger outbound clients as as they look as far as what I'm doing. Um, and so that's really um, what I've got going forward. And um, sort of something to share is that on my journey as a tourpreneur along the way, I've really tried to focus on one word, and that's quality, quality tours and the, the guides that I've attracted Um, are all individuals that are immersed in the Civil War battlefields. And um, most of them are um, historians or authors. Um, Over half of my guides are published authors on the Civil War battlefields. So they're not people that I'm taking off the street and handing them a a script that they're going to regurgitate five times a day. These are individuals that know this subject and beyond so that when they get a question it's not a question that, oh, it's, it's off the script. They, they know not only the what, but they know the why and the how behind uh, these battlefields. And that's really kind of um, been a successful key as far as uh, attracting um, clients that see, oh, you know, your, your guy wrote a few books and you guys know a thing or two. Uh, and it also helps to get a, uh, you know, return clients as, as far as mm-hmm. they've had a quality experience with a, a very knowledgeable guide. We've given them a, a comprehensive experience. Once they're done with uh, a battlefield tour, there's no reason to come back to that battlefield unless they want to explore it more. Now they can move on to another battlefield tour. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's great, John. And, and that, you know, I wish you all the success in the world. I really do, and I think with uh, with the direction you're going down in terms of going after students and schools and various other things, that combined with the episodic nature, I think that could be something where a classroom could come time and time again to learn new parts of of history for their their curriculums and stuff like that as well. I think that could be. I think you could be onto a winner with that one, to be honest. So, thank you, Chris. No, you're pregnant. So how can people find you if, they, if they're interested to know more about you and your business or maybe even want to take out a tour and, and, and check you out? How, how is the best way to, to get a hold of you? Well, you can go to our uh, website, our Facebook page, uh, TripAdvisor, uh, Battlefield Tours of Virginia. Um, and uh, you can go to either one of those sites, see what we're about. Um contact us uh phone email um i i love to talk to other tourpreneurs if you have any uh questions if, if i can help you i've, I've learned so much uh, from other tourpreneurs i love to return the favor 
Oh, brilliant, John. Brilliant, John. And then, like I say, I found it fascinating. And, you know, and again, if anyone's listening, if you get one takeaway, you know, having something there that you can create various tour options and you know, having day tours and multi-day tours and that episodic thing, I think that's absolutely fantastic. And I think it's what a lot of operators um, listening should, should be thinking about in their own business. So thanks again for your time, John. And uh, hopefully see you at another Tourpreneur Shindig at some point in the future. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you.